Hello, and welcome to Endophytes 101. My name is Stephanie Smith, and I am an equine science and management student at the University of Kentucky. One of my projects as an intern with the UK Forage Group was to put together this video to teach you the basics of the endophyte found in tall fescue. Here are the topics we'll cover today. First, I'd like to share a brief history of tall fescue with you. It may be surprising to hear that tall fescue is not native to the United States or even to North America. It actually originated in Europe. It is thought that the tall fescue made its way to North America as a contaminant seed brought over by early European settlers. In the late 1800s, William M. Souter of Menifee County, Kentucky, noticed a vigorous grass growing on one particular hillside on his farm. He noticed that it was perennial, stress resistant, and had a good root system, and his cattle ate it readily. So he collected seeds and continued planting the grass until it comprised most of his farm. Eventually, this grass would become to be known as the Kentucky 31 variety of tall fescue through the work of University of Kentucky professor Dr. E. N. Fergus and agronomy field agent William Johnstone. Kentucky 31 tall fescue is long lived because of a fungus that grows in between the plant cells, called an endophyte. The problem is that this endophyte produces toxic ergot alkaloids, and these toxins are harmful to livestock. Today, there are also varieties of tall fescue with a novel or non-toxic endophyte or other varieties with no endophyte at all. The only way to tell the endophyte status of a tall fescue plant is through laboratory testing. As I just stated, the endophyte of tall fescue is a fungus that grows between the plant cells. It can only be seen with a microscope. Here we have a diagram of the endophyte's life cycle. It is important to remember that since the endophyte spreads via seed, endophyte-infected plants will always produce endophyte-infected seed. The diagram here shows where the endophyte can be found inside the tall fescue plant. The tillers, or bases of the stems, and the seed heads have the highest concentration of toxins. Therefore, timely mowing and not grazing closer than three inches are important if you have tall fescue in your pastures. Fortunately, the leaves have lower concentrations of toxins, but they can still impact animal health. Although the Kentucky 31 endophyte produces toxic alkaloids such as ergovaline, the endophyte also produces alkaloids that are beneficial to the plant. They provide a level of insect repellent, which is one reason why Kentucky 31 is such a good turf grass. The Kentucky 31 endophyte also helps the plant to be persistent in stressful environments such as tough grazing and heavy traffic. Endophytes and the alkaloids they produce are the reason infected tall fescue is so persistent in pastures. I mentioned earlier the novel endophyte of tall fescue. Let's talk about that a little more. In the late 1990s, scientists found strains of endophytes that did not produce toxic alkaloids and they put these endophytes into new fescue varieties. These new novel endophyte varieties were insect resistant, grazing tolerant, and persistent in stressful environments, but they did not hurt livestock. Novel endophyte tall fescue is the best of both worlds. You can see here on the screen several varieties of novel endophyte tall fescue. Not all tall fescue plants have endophytes. Researchers have removed the endophyte and created new varieties of tall fescue without the endophyte. These endophyte-free varieties do not produce toxic alkaloids and so are safe for animals, but they also lack the benefits of increased pest resistance, stress tolerance, and persistence. In Kentucky and other southeastern U.S. states, we generally don't recommend planting endophyte-free tall fescue varieties. I've been talking about toxic alkaloids quite a bit, so let's discuss how they affect livestock. Fescue toxicosis causes many disorders in grazing animals. Fescue toxicosis symptoms in cattle and other ruminant livestock include gangrenous sloughing of hooves and tails, retention of winter coats in the summer, shaggy, unkempt appearance, vasoconstriction, high body temperature, fat necrosis, heat stress, reduced forage intake, 
increased respiration rate, and lowered heart rate. Some of these symptoms contribute to summer slump. Summer slump leads to a drop-off in weight gain of cattle because they spend more time in the shade or water and less time grazing. Many of these behavior changes are due to vasoconstriction, which is the tightening of blood vessels, which reduces blood flow. Reduced blood flow means that the cattle have a much harder time ridding their bodies of excess heat, which is why they spend so much more time standing in the shade or water to cool off. Acute vexuosity is experienced by only a portion of horses. It is the most harmful to third trimester broodmares. Broodmares who graze infected tall fescue during the last third of pregnancy experience aglactia or lack of milk production, retained and or thickened placenta, breathing difficulty or dystocia, prolonged pregnancy, and even death. There is currently no easy cure for acute fescue toxicosis or its symptoms, so reducing the intake of toxic tall fescue is key. A major part of preventing fescue toxicosis has to do with proper management of toxic or infected tall fescue pastures. Assume your pasture has toxic Kentucky 31 fescue unless you have planted a new variety in recent years. To be able to properly manage infected pastures, you must know when the concentrations of toxins within the plant are highest. As you can see from this graph on the screen, ergovaline levels peak during late spring and early summer including the months of late April, May, and June. There is another spike around November and the fall. Fortunately, there are several management options to reduce the negative symptoms of fescue toxicosis. Since the toxic plants will produce toxic seed, mowing before the plants become reproductive will help reduce new toxic plants from germinating. Keep in mind that the highest concentrations of toxins are present in the seed heads and stem bases of the plant, so proper mowing and prevention of overgrazing can reduce the levels of toxins present in the diet. Another way to reduce the level of toxins being ingested by livestock is dilution. This means having a mix of different grasses and clovers in the pasture instead of having only tall fescue. Note that this doesn't always work with horses because they are such selective grazers. Red clover is a great addition to cattle pastures because the isoflavones help counteract vasoconstriction caused by toxins. Another way to reduce the effects of fescue toxicosis is to employ a combination of pasture renovation and grazing control. For example, if you have four pastures with infected tall fescue, renovate one of them with a novel endophyte tall fescue variety or even another type of grass altogether. This strategy will allow you to graze broodmares on the toxic fields during the first two trimesters of pregnancy, then move them to the renovated field during the last trimester to avoid acute fescue toxicity. For cattle, let them graze only novel tall fescue a month before, during, and a month after the breeding season to avoid the effects of, to of toxicosis and reduced pregnancy rates. An option to help reduce the issues caused by fescue toxicosis is to convert your pastures from toxic tall fescue to novel endophyte or endophyte-free tall fescue. Remember that by having novel endophyte tall fescue, the grass will still be persistent in stressful environments, pest-resistant and tolerant to grazing, but it won't harm the livestock. Endophyte-free tall fescue will not cause harm to livestock, but will not have the advantages of persistence, pest resistance, or grazing tolerance that are granted by the endophyte. Here, we got an example of the steps you can take to completely, convert, to completely convert a pasture from toxic to novel endophyte tall fescue. This was developed by Dr. Ray Smith of the University of Kentucky's Plant and Soil Science Department. All right, before we wrap up, I've got a few last notes for you. If fescue toxicosis is a problem in your pastures, do not overuse nitrogen fertilizer because nitrogen increases concentrations of toxic alkaloids in the plants. Lastly, if you don't do anything else in the way of managing toxic tall fescue, keep the pasture leafy and vegetative, meaning don't let seed heads form and don't overgraze the, overgraze the pasture.
Adding clover or other forages will help reduce the proportion of fescue that the animals are consuming. All of these strategies will reduce the risk of toxicity to your livestock. Thank you for joining me today to learn about the endophytes of tall fescue. I'd like to give special thanks to Dr. Ray Smith for his contribution to this presentation, as well as Dr. Jimmy Henning for many of the photos. Special thanks also go to Dr. Chris Teutsch and Mrs. Krista Lay. Please visit the UK Forages webpage for additional information and detailed publications. Thank you.